Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how to share our images, not only through Lightroom 4's web gallery, but also by using published services and by using email. So let's get started. I have a collection here in the library module, and I'm going to scoot over to the web module by simply clicking on that module in the module picker. Now, there are a variety of different kinds of web galleries that we can make. You can make an HTML gallery or a Flash gallery, and we also have some additional galleries that we ship by default. So, for example, this airtight poster card viewer is pretty cool. It kind of lays out all of your images as a postcard. And you can come down here to the appearance area, and you can tell it maybe that you want a few more columns, and maybe you want your photo borders more or less, or the padding more or less. And then watch, when you click on an image, it zooms up that image. Click again and it'll zoom back. But you might want to go with something maybe a little bit more traditional, so let's go back to the layout style. And let's take a look at the Lightroom Flash Gallery. And one of the things that we improved in Lightroom 4 is all of these Flash Galleries are now color managed. So, you can see that when I select a gallery, we then have all these additional options here on the right hand side. So let's take a look at some of the different panels. You can change the site title right here. So if I wanted to maybe call this my Ireland Gallery, and my collection might be Photography by Julianne Cost. And then we can scoot down and we can either include this description or we can simply delete it. So just because there is a text entry area doesn't mean that you actually have to enter in text. We can put a contact name here and instead of actually just putting my name, we could put email me or something like that, give them directions, and then I would just put my email down here, jcost, and that way when they click the email, it would go ahead and link to my email. In the color palette area, you'll notice that you can change all of the different colors for things like your text and your header and your menu. And in the template browser over here, you'll also notice that there are a lot of different templates that already have some of these colors changed. So if you happen to like some of these other templates better, maybe that would be a better starting point. But for now, let's go ahead and just move to the appearance panel. So here we can put the layout either to the left as it is now. We can go ahead and put it scrolling at the bottom. We could do it paginated or we can do a slideshow only. So you can actually create a slideshow within the web module in order to post to the web. We can add our identity plate, which adds either a graphical or a text identity plate up here in the upper left. And we can see that I can change that out by either clicking here and selecting one of my presets or going to the edit menu here and then entering in either whatever text I want or using a different graphic. But for now, let's just go ahead and leave it. I'm actually going to turn it off. We have control over our large images and our thumbnail images. Now to show this, let's go ahead and move back maybe to the scrolling option here. And I'll leave the large image size alone, but let's change the thumbnail size. Maybe take that down to medium so that we can see a few more images at one time down along the bottom. We can also change our image info. And here you'll notice by default that I can show a title and a caption, but we can change that right here because I might not have entered in titles for my images or captions in my images because this information Lightroom is getting from the metadata of the file. So maybe instead I just want to show my file name there. And now you can see that that file name appears underneath the image. As far as output settings go, we can determine the quality of compression on those large images. We can decide what metadata we want to include in the file. Of course, if we choose to only do the copyright, the file size is probably going to be a little bit smaller. And we can also choose to add a watermark, which you can see down there in the left-hand corner. And we can change that template as well, just like we did the identity plate. And we can use either text or graphics. And we can choose to sharpen all of these images, either low, standard, or high. Once we've got our template all set up, then we go down to the Upload Settings, and we go ahead and create a preset with all of the information that we need to upload this gallery to our website. All right, so that is the Flash Gallery. If we go back to the layout style, you'll notice there's also an HTML gallery. 
and the HTML gallery is just going to differ a little bit in as far as what options you have. So again, I could go over here and change the site title. I can also change the site title right in line here. So I could put Photography by Julianne, and then maybe change this title here to Ireland 2011, and so on. So I can either change the text, or if I delete the text, then it will just kind of move up my image area next to the text that is there. I can change my contact name like we just saw before. I can add an identity plate. We can change the different colors. I can change the appearance. So maybe in my thumbnail view, I want to see more thumbnails. Right now, I'm actually looking at a larger image. So let's go back to the index so that we can see the grid there of the index. And you can see I can make that as wide or as deep as I want to. Or we can just leave it very small if we think maybe our viewers are going to be on smaller monitors. We can turn on or off these cell numbers. We can add photo borders if we want. And we can change the image pages as far as the size here as well as the photo borders down here. So lots of things that you can change. We go to the image info. That's the same for HTML and Flash. Output settings are the same. And upload settings are the same. The key is once you've created the template that you like, if you want to use this template with other sets of images, then you would save that template in the template browser. If you want to save this specific template with these specific images in them, then you would create a saved web gallery. So we'll click on that, and we'll call this Web Gallery Ireland. And we'll save it inside my collection set called Ireland. We'll click Create. And then just like we saw when we were in Slideshow or Print or the Book module, when I'm in the library module and I've navigated to other folders and other collections, if I want to quickly go back to the web module and view that collection of images, I can just click on the arrow in the library module and I see that whole project. All right, so that's one way that we can share our images online. Another way we can do that is if we return back to the library module. We have a variety of different published services. Now, by default, we have one set for the hard drive. So if I just want to automatically publish images to my hard drive, um, maybe I want to sync them with my phone or something like that, I can do that by just going here to the Publishing Manager and setting up a publishing settings for my hard drive. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set one up for Facebook. But we could also set it up for Flickr, and we could find more services online. So if you're using a different method of sharing, you can click there and see if there is software created that will help you share directly from Lightroom to that online service. But for now, let's go and walk through the setup for Facebook. Now, because I've already authorized this account before, and then I deleted it, Lightroom knows that, and I'm already logged in on my Facebook page, so it authorized me automatically. Now, I want to upload these to a specific album, so I'll go ahead and select one from one that I've already created. I could also create a new album here if I wanted to. And I'm going to choose to use the name of the file as the title for Facebook. And I'm going to go ahead, if I update my photos, I'm going to replace the existing title. I also need to give this a description. So let's just give it demo for right now for my published services. And then I'm going to leave my file naming the same so that my images on disk are the same name as the ones that I published to Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and say that it can update video even though I don't have any video right now included. I'm going to set my file settings to JPEG, obviously, and then the quality to 80. If I wanted to, I could limit the file size to a specific number. For, for now, I think 80 is going to be fine. I'll resize my images, and we can choose whatever size we want. Let's say maybe I want to limit this to 600 pixels on the long edge. And I want to sharpen them for the screen at a standard amount. As far as metadata, I don't want to include all the metadata. I can limit this to my copyright and my contact information only. One thing to notice is if you do say all or all except camera and camera raw info, you can choose to remove the location information, which is really quite nice if you don't want, say, the GPS data to travel along with your images. All right, for now, I'm going to set this back to copyright and contact info. And if you want to add a watermark when you export your images up to Facebook, you can do that right here. But I'm going to turn that off for now. 
Now, once I've set this up the way I want it, I'll go ahead and click Save, and now you can see that here in my Facebook area, I have a published service, and here's the album. So if I want to take this image from either the web gallery or we could go back from my portfolio and we could select this image and maybe, maybe two images here and drag them into my published collection, then when I click on the published collection, we can see that I have two new photos to publish. Well, I want to go ahead and publish these now, so I'll go ahead and click the Publish button. The great thing about published services is that not only does it publish it directly to my Facebook page, but it also keeps track of what I have published. So that in the future, there's really, I don't have to go up to my page and wonder, hmm, how long ago did I publish and have I published that image? Lightroom's going to keep track of that. And in fact, if I make any changes to this image, let me show you what happens. I'll tap the D key to go to develop. And let's say maybe I want to take a little bit of the warmth out of the sky. So I've made a change to the temperature slider, and when I go back to the library module, you'll notice now that in my published services, Lightroom is warning me that I have modified this photo to republish. So if I wanted to republish it, all I would need to do is click the Publish button. Sometimes, though, you might not want to republish. Um, maybe you made this change for some other reason, or maybe you just added some keywords while you were in Lightroom. If you don't want to republish this, in Lightroom 4, you can right mouse click and come down here to where it says Mark as Up to Date, and it kind of overrides the Publish settings, and it will mark that as up to date without republishing it. So just know that that option is available. Excellent. The last thing I want to talk about is just emailing some photographs. So here we can select our images from wherever, publish services, or I could go back up to my collection if I wanted to. The point is you would select the images that you want to email, and then you can use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift M for mail or Control Shift M for mail. I can go ahead and enter in my email. I can type in a subject. And down here, I'm going to use this preset so that Lightroom will resize the images for me and save them as a JPEG. And we have these four different presets here, which I think will probably meet everybody's needs. But if you want to create your own preset, you'd go down to Create New Preset. It takes you to the Export dialog box and sets the export to email to kind of help you by limiting your um, image format to JPEG so you don't accidentally send like you know, a 10 megabyte file through email. We could improve the quality here, and we can change the size and everything. So you can customize this as much as you want. For now, I'm just going to hit Cancel because I actually like these presets right here. I'm going to use the large preset, and when I click Send, Lightroom will automatically launch my email program and create a new email and attach these two files to that email and address it to me and add in the subject, which I misspelled, so we'll just add an O there, and then I could click Send. Well, that wraps up three different ways that you can share your images from Lightroom, either creating a web gallery or by using published services or by emailing. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.